From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, Jim Cronin, and Dean Stockwell in The Green Years. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, another MGM picture. An outstanding favorite is being presented on the stage. A thrilling drama that will live forever in our hearts. It's A.J. Cronin's masterpiece, The Green Year. And we are fortunate indeed in bringing you the original looking picture cast. Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, Ewan Cronin, and Dean Stockwell. It's curtain time, and here's the play millions of you hope to see, The Green Year. Starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Roby, Beverly Tyler as Allison, Ewan Cronin as Mr. Lucky, with Dean Stockwell as the boy Roby. Robert Stannon, orphan, aged nine years, journeyed from Ireland to the town of Loganford in Scotland, there to make his new home with Mr. and Mrs. Lucky, the parents of his dead mother. You're late, Mama. Supper's waiting. I'm sorry, Jane, but my train was delayed. I suppose you spent good money on the card? No, we don't. Well, look at Robbie, this is a grandfather. Robert, no one regrets more than I that we meet under these circumstances. You call me Papa rather than Grandpa. We have one Grandpa in the house already. He is my father, Robbie. Grandpa Gow. Now, this is Kate, dear. You're right. Oh, look, this is beautiful, dear. This is Miss Kate. And this is your Uncle Murdoch? I hope you like it here, Robbie. Thank you. Our other son, Adam, lives in London. A very successful insurance broker, Robert. Oh, it's hard for you, boy, coming to know us all at once. You'll feel better after supper. Sit down. Oh, Heavenly Father, you've blessed me with this new responsibility, my grandson, Robert. You know, Lord, how his mother deceived me and married a wild, irresponsible Irishman. Not even at the face of his household. Help me to carry this extra burden and deliver him from deceit, wild ways, and extravagance. Amen. Amen. Pass your place. Mm. Boy has no belongings, Mama? Nothing. Only a tricycle coming from Dublin to carry it. A tricycle? Mm. That improvident Irishman. Oh, that a daughter of mine had run off with a man who'd leave nothing but a tricycle. Papa! Well, he's a boy, then, are you? Oh. Uh, it's oh. recent. Today's Friday. The boy's not of our first papa. Oh. Hi. It's just a minute, isn't it? I'll take your meat, then. Waste not, want not. Where will you be sending Roby to school, papa? It's the elementary, of course. That is the truth. Isn't it bad enough I have to teach you? I'll give no reflections, kids, on a school that pays you 16 shillings a week. Why can't you go to the academy? The laddie comes to us with no money. But you've got things, Mr. Christian. You don't want to be a sister, 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 Oh, that's right. Well, Robert will go to the academy. Then, Daddy, have you nothing to say? Thank you. Paul. He doesn't want to eat. Let him go to bed. Have you decided where he's just sleep? I still think Grandma Lucky's room would be best. My mother pays good money for her room. She'll be home tomorrow, and you know she dislikes surprises. Please, please, just grand for Gow, then, Robbie. Get a bag, boy. It's a nice room at the end of the day. So you'll be Robert Shannon. Hey, there should be more of you. Yes, Tinker. The pity you don't have my hair. Your mother had my hair. You were lucky. If there's one thing I cannot abide, it's a crying lady. Will, what might you be wanting? I said I was to sleep with you. Sleep with me? Will, will you get expectations to sleep with your clothes on? Go on, dear. Look at me, laddie. I, I, you'll need a friend in this house. It's all right, boy. It's all right. Come along, Robbie. It's a fine breath morning. And I'm taking you with me to my lawyer. I'm busy. Is it Santa? I, I'm off to see my lawyer. He takes the key. You didn't know. You didn't take it. I can't. Papa says he's not there. What's that? He says he asked him to take me. Someday, Robbie, I shall take this and let you in these two hands of mine and I shall... Oh, good morning, Mr. Gold. Ah, Mrs. Bosomer. What a picture you make, madam. The sun shining like golden hot springs through your radiant hair. Have you had the honor of meeting my great grandson, Robert? Robert? Your grandpa's a poet. And who wouldn't be the privilege to greet this lovely into the morning? Be off with your candy, Take my advice, Robbie. Enjoy the ladies. 
Where human races better hop. To the body, to the body, from and to the land. Come in, Dandy. Come in. I'll give you about a minute, Robbie. Sit down there. Yes, Dandy. I say, uh, six documents, uh, copy Dandy Gow. Are they ready? They are, Mr. Mercury. Sir, here they are. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, it's a lovely copy. Oh, it's a couple of pages, too. It's a pity you couldn't have done such a job on your first Dandy Gow as you have on your handwriting. Well, I'll credit this work for the rest. Could you be uh, letting me have, say, perhaps uh, half a crown, sir? And what did I tell your son-in-law, Mr. Lucky? You know the arrangement. The money I pay you to copy my legal paper so to pay this premium on your life insurance. I, I, I know, but uh, perhaps it's true. I see through your dandy demon rum. No, not a penny. No, out with you. Robbie, come here. Lad, this is Mr. McKellar. As fine and generous a man as you'll ever know. May I present my great grandson, Robert? If you're ever in trouble, and heaven help us, you probably will be, why you'll know who to come to. Excuse me, uh, Gandhi, I find there's a little item of half a crown, do you, after all? Yeah, it's a trivial matter, lawyer. Thank you, sir, and good day. Goodbye, you, Robert. Goodbye, Mr. Keller. You look strange. I never noticed that establishment before. What's that mean, Robert? Yes, the street there. What does that sign say, laddie? It's a green gown. Good day, lawyer. Oh, bless me, bless me. Obviously a place of refreshment. How would you like a nice glass of bubbling lemonade? Thank you, Mr. Keller. Excellent. I'll fetch you one. And then you can play. Yonder's the village green, see? Aye, there's a lucky boy. Lemonade and lucky. What more could you ask? Hello. Hello. What are you doing? I'm waiting for my cousin. I'm going to see my grandpa. What's your name? Robert Turner. I'm here. I'm all too good. What are you going to do when you grow up? I don't know. Do you? Of course. I'm going to marry a fine man. I have many fine children. Oh, where's my cousin now? What are you talking to, Alice? Who's your boy? This is Louisa. He's my cousin. What's your name, Jeanette? It's, it's really smart. Oh, you're a talking person. Yes. Come on, Alice. Keep talking. But that's all right. I said, come on. You'll say something about that. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Alice. Did you have a nice time on the green lap? Yes, Santa. Green laddie? What are you thinking about? Nothing. Where did you get that big red nose? No, big red nose. Why? Did you never hear of the Zulu War? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, boy, I'm not the one to brag. But there we were, cut off in the jungle by the savage hordes of Zulu. Someone had to get a message through the relief column. I'll carry it there, Clyde. I took a revolver in each hand and a knife in the tooth. Quietly, I crawled across the rocky belt. The jungle, that is. I was almost through the enemy line when they charged upon me by the score. I fired. Bam, 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 bam. Screaming, the savages fell back. But how long could the ammunition hold out? I flashed over the knife. Zip, zip, zip. Pop, he fired up a me. But the Zulu still came. And then... Then, then. Oh, then a sweet sight. Out of the dark of the night came running my great white charger, Athena. I leaped on a back. The Zulu gave chase. Flights the poison arrows dark in the air. I was wounded. I crowned them hard. Oh, that magnificent animal. He carried me to the relief column. Taken, bleeding, breathless. I fell into their arms with my message. The flag was saved. <laughs> they seemed to think so when the queen, God bless her, decorated me at Balmoral Castle. But Dad, I was a good place to get me. A poison steer lad, a direct hit. Oh, how wonderful. Here's me again. Some other day, laddie. And there will be others. It's you and me together, my boy, in whatever the difficulty. Yes, Uncle. And we're in difficulty this very moment. Yes? Look up the street, Ruby. Your grandma let me come home. <laughs> Let me try and fall into the clutches of that horrible old man. Ah, here he is now. Come in, Robbie. Come in and be seen by your grandma, Letty. You'll now be in the hands of a good Christian woman. So come to your grandma, Robert. Mm -hmm. Look at his clothes. Do you think he can go to the academy and drag? But the lad who comes to us with no money. Oh. You're no suggestion I buy his clothes, are you? You're my son, but you're a tight-twisted penny pink and neither. Here, boy, here's a suit. Thank you. Sit there, laddie. Don't drink. They'll last longer than that, eh? 
so the blessing of the year grand ago. This one, the thing about the Zulu War and how it got its secret nose. The Zulu War. So the thing in the nose a pretty spear. I get some rum at once. Come on, lad. First thing I'll do is measure you for a new suit. Oh, never fear, boys. If I make up just grand. But the color, Grandma. It's, it's green and no flowers. You'll not notice the flowers when it's done. Bedtime now, Robbie. Good night, Grandma. Where are you going? Good night, everyone. You're sleeping with me, Robbie, from now on. And there's a thing or two you should know about that man. He's here as indeed. That man's never set foot 50 miles from here. He's tagged for 10 all his life. He's charged from every situation he's ever held. Oh, he's supported, like you said, by the charity of my son. You get never to you. You're out of his influence now. No, you to bed. I've got to get to work on your new suit. And don't forget, boys, the academy opens Monday. <laughs> You're home from school, are you, Robbie? Grandpa, the two weeks I've gone to school. Can I go back again? No, 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 no. The master's been up here. Is it that it? Is it Reed? No, Grandpa. It's the truth. You know, boys. Well, now, since Grandma Lexi thinks so much here, isn't she the one you should be running to? But it's your fault. It's not me, you see. A green suit with flowers. <laughs> Lady, you cannot blame the boys for laughing. But on the other hand, you cannot have them laughing at you. Now, will you do what I tell you? You need them, Grandpa. I promise. Then who is the strongest, the most stubbornest, and the most independentest boy in the class? Gavin Blair. Well, then, you must meet Gavin Blair. Okay. If you want to get on top, you must remove the top men. You'll fight this Gavin Blair and you'll lick him. Grandpa, you'll fight him. Then I must fight Mr. Reed and implore his protection of my weak little grandson. No, Grandpa, no. Well, then? But I don't know how to fight. Ah, what a lucky boy you are. Here I am, the man who stood toe to toe with Billy the Butcher. You know the famous 84 round bare knuckle fight to the finish against terrible carry. No, Grandpa. We all know Billy the Butcher. But who held his coat? Hmm? Come on, boys. Up with your feet. Chin down. Lead with your left. We'll show this Gavin Blair. Aim at my nose now, boy. Aim at my nose. Go for your nose. It's all right, lad. It's all right. I permitted your distraction. And now you understand the importance of ducking. Well, come on, Robbie. Try it again. <laughs> Hello, Robbie. You? I'll fight the Gavin Blair, Grandpa. Well, I've never seen a finer black eye in heaven. But, Grandpa, I lost. Gavin, look me. But obviously you did not run away. You know, what's this? It's my green suit. There it is. But what that suit are you wearing? Gavin Blair, who gave it to me? The boy who looked you? He took me on my suit. He, he liked me, Grandpa. It was blood all over the green suit. Give me that emerald raiment. There, into the grave with it, Robbie, and good to live Ready? you can receive many a black eye in this life. But if you're a man, you'll not be the loser. You mean a man already? I do, I. You're a man like your own grandpa, a fear of nothing. You can go your own way, attend your own church, and you can spit in any man's eye. Robert? Stand up to her, Robbie. Mind, you're a man, no? Good work, Robert. You're going to clear me with. Where did you get that suit? And your eyes. Where did you get that eye? In a fight, Grandma. What did you do with the bullet? Bring it to the We burned it. We didn't think Mr. Lucky would like to see it around. Blood on it. Not very sanitary. And another thing. I'd better see the candles from now on. What's that? I'm a man now. This is your work, Mr. Gary, you piece of the field. You heard what the laddie said. He's a man now. And in that case, madam, I don't think Mr. Lucky would approve of his sleeping in your room. Oh, look. Will you know, Robbie? Well, I'm going to... <laughs> What is it you want, Robert? Can't you see I'm reading? Robbie, dear, the superintendent of sanitation had an attack of golf stones. Now, who knows? One of these days, Papa may be wearing a double brain on his cap. And if that's what happens, Papa must be left to do his study in his place. Who's the superintendent of Papa's place? I need 15 shillings. We'll talk about it so much. 15 shillings? Robbie, what for? Well, my name's here. My burden. My responsibility. You see this book? An encyclopedia of sanitation for which I have to pay 21 shillings. And now you ask me for 15 more. Can I need to buy a suit. Can I need to buy a suit? 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 Can I need to buy a I need to buy a suit. I don't know what you have. It's a good time. I need to make a suit. Robert, I- I've been tolerant. I've let you attend the Church of Rome without interference or reproach. I'm a liberal man. 
But liberty can go too far. And when it starts costing money, I'm against it. I'm sorry I bothered you. I wish I had the money to give you, boy. You see, Robbie, it's a very difficult thing. I live in the house of Mr. Lucky, and I pay no money for the rare privilege. I earn money copying papers for Mr. McKellar, but it all goes to pay my life insurance. I never see a penny of it. Please, Father, it is a But it's important to get the new suit, so you could change your face. Why don't you go to the established church? Yes, I couldn't. Your grandma let me would just love you if you did. There's no sense taking the hard way. I think I'm strong to be, Grandpa. If you'd said anything else, I'd have disowned you. Robbie, I'm a sinful and irreverent man with little interest in any church. But before I see you done out of your suit, I'll burn the town of Logan for it. Okay, Mr. Dow, a new book to read, is it? I'm not buying a book, sir. I'm selling one. An encyclopedia of sanitation. I believe Mr. Lecky purchased this for 21 shillings. He did? Mr. Lecky says it is not comprehensive enough. He must have his money back. Oh, it has been yours now. I cannot give him more than 17 shillings. I shall accept 15. Eh? It's a matter of justice. I don't understand. You don't have to. Take your book, sir, and give me 15 cents. Mr. Dow, you did what with my encyclopedia? I sold it, Mr. Lecky, for 15 shillings, and then I bought the boy his new suit. That robbery? I'll, I'll have you arrested. I was hoping you'd say that, Mr. Lecky. And what would the court say of a civil employee who robs an orphan lad of his tricycle and sells it for 15 shillings? You deceitful old man. I have just one more word, and if you ever dare to mention this to Robbie, I'll burn this house down at my first opportunity. Good day, Mr. Lecky. <laughs> It's five years now since I first wrote in this diary. There was a flower show in Hale yesterday. Alice and Keith ran. Later, Gavin and I danced with her. It's good to have friends like Gavin and Alice. It's almost June. In two weeks, I'll be graduated from the academy. The whole family will be there. Even Grandpa says he'll come. It'll be the first time he sat down with the lecturers and screamed at Gloria's jubilee. And now, parents and friends, as we conclude our graduation exercises, it is with considerable pleasure that I make an award to our outstanding students. In my 11 years at the academy, not a single student has warranted this prize. Now at last, Logan Foot possesses a young scientist, who I prophesy someday will be a great doctor. And Mr. Robert Cannon, a special medal in science. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Good work, Green Bridges. Good luck. It seems strange, doesn't it? All those years in the academy, and now we're walking home together for the last time. Well, Gavin, have you noticed what's here and what's your chances? I told him my father still wants you to come with us to look in there. Listen, thanks, Gavin, but I can't. But the farm will be running. I've got a job starting Monday. A job? The boiler works. So it's not now, you know. Two thousand people can get me into the machine shop. The boy went. Oh, Robbie, what's the matter with you? There's no chance at all you'll be coming to the university. No, Gavin. When do you leave for Los Angeles? Tomorrow. Well, here's the big. Good luck to you, Robbie. You too, Alex. Thanks. Goodbye, Gavin. I'll write to you. You're missing me. I... It's a bone now. I... It's a bone, please. You can never even walk on. Listen. I... Put your head over here beside mine. It's my heart. It's such a romantic thing. I... I they tell me there's a fake water pot on that river. Uh, you know, there isn't there a chance in the world that you can go on with your studies? Mr. Reese thinks you're going. If you ever even occurred to him, Mr. Reese. I have obligations, Alice. Mm. The lucky's aren't rich. Well, they're not poor, but they're still poor. I guess it's the same. Oh, you're the most exasperating person I've ever knew. It's your bow to be a doctor. You know it's Roby, but now it's the boy work. Just because it's interesting. Oh, to be a doctor. To have a laboratory of my own. Well, at least you're not going away. No. I'll study my thing and have a Logan for it. For a while, anyway. Green driving. My mother says that in Scotland, not even a nurse to do it. 
don't know what you mean by that. Don't you know? And he, the cleverest boy in Logan City? Our son. He was a fool. I mean, would it be all right? Could I put my arm about you? Yes, you would, Rosie. It is a bony night. I know. A bony night. In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of The Green Year, starring Charles Cogan, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, and Jim Conan. Occasionally, the United States Senate Chamber is illuminated by a glimmer of humor, like the time word reached the Senate that certain interests in Hong Kong were making commercial use of the works of American songwriters without paying the customary composer royalty fees. After investigating, the lawmakers designed a bill to protect Tim Pan Alley. Sponsors of the measure were Senators Russell Long of Louisiana, Hawaii's Hiram Fong, William Fong from Virginia, and Edward Long of Missouri. The legislation was introduced on the Senate floor as the Long Fong Spong Long Hong Kong Song Bill. On another occasion, Congress honored Robert Frost with an award recognizing his contributions to American letters. In presenting a medal to Mr. Frost, the late President Kennedy took note of the unanimous vote on the matter and concluded it's the only thing Congress has agreed on for a long time. Two of the lighter moments that really happened on Capitol Hill. Act two of the Green Year, starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Wilbur, Beverly Tyler as Allison, and Jim Cronin as Mr. Lucky. Now, Robert Shannon has labored in the boiler work at Logan But one night, drying and tired, he meets a friend as he leaves the factory. Ten minutes later, breathless and excited, he bursts into Allison's house. Logan, Logan, what is it? I just saw him, Allison. Mr. Reed. Oh, you don't know what's happened. He's arranged for me to sit for the marshal. The marshal's so rich. I can study medicine, Allison. Oh, no. Well, I haven't won it yet. I can't win it. It's impossible, but I can try. Oh, Allison. Oh, Brother, I don't want to kiss him. You said I could eat your face if you eat the pinhead. Oh, no, no, I don't. It's such a wonderful thing. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Excited. Goodbye, Allison. I'll see you later. Oh, Robbie, a scholarship. I'm going to tell you how much. A hundred pounds a year. For five years, Mama. What's this paper, Robbie? And Mr. Reed gave it to me for you to sign. Mr. Smith gave it to me for you to sign. Robbie, you must understand something well. I've no hard and easy time of it. Murdoch, after all, has spent his education works in that nursery raising flowers. No more money for board from Grandma Letty since she's gone to kill Monarch. No financial aid from Katie now she's married, and Grandpa Gow is still upstairs with an appetite like a growing boy. Even Adam. Adam, my own son, a great, successful man in London, owned the 50 towns for 12 years now. He'll pay. Uh, he'll pay indeed. Mama, I've resolved. I'm going to London. I'll collect that 50 pounds if it takes the whole four weeks of my holiday to do it. We were speaking of a scholarship, Papa. I cannot let you go for five years more without a penny of return for the support of the house. No, I won't have it. I won't have it. You must let him. You can't sell the rubbish life and hope for a few pennies from the boiler work. Mama, who spoke of money? I'm doing this for your own good, Robbie. You're reaching above your station in life and you're reaching out the disappointment. No. No, I cannot sign the paper. <laughs> Are you Mr. Jason Reed? I am. Sit down, Mr. Gow. Mr. Reed, I'm not merely Robert Shannon's great grandfather. I'm a defender of the rights of man. I tell you, sir, when a man thinks low enough to deny these rights, I protest. And if you are among these worms who would deny the boy an education, I tell you, I shall not stand by and countenance such a sin. And I must tell you, Mr. Gow, that the laddie cannot be entered for the scholarship only because Mr. Lecky had denied permission. Then we'll enter him on the quiet. The entry must be signed by his guardian. I'll sign it. Mr. Gow, have you lost your wit? I still have the wit to sign my own name. Under that fool Lecky's nose, I'll send Lecky away. I might even send him to London. This is the most unbelievable and dangerous nonsense I've ever heard. But I'm with your heart and soul. Here, take these books, sir, over. Let him start with these till Lecky goes to London. Now, off with you, Mr. Reed. We remain like ours. We'll tear them to pieces. I'm going to London this proper. I've made up my mind. Oh, Mama. And you have nothing to interfere with your study and for the scholarship, because I think to it will not come back till the middle of August. Mama, 
Who told you? Never mind. Good luck, Robbie, dear. I'm so tired, Mr. Reed. I've studied so long. I've read so much. I swear I don't know anything now. I haven't even begun. All right, now, mathematics. What is a conic section? The intersection of a plane with a cone. Clumsy. What's the formula for the surface of the sphere? All right, boys. Paper. Come now, paper. Thank you. Face the growth of industrial Europe. Causes. Effects. Think, boys. Think. Distinguish between density and specific gravity. Between kinetic and potential energy. What were Newton's three laws of motion? Think, 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 think. It's tried the cheap product of the Daniel Valley. Not to do. Oh. The examination starts tomorrow. Not to do. According to Mr. Reed, only second grade is studying for the last minute. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Well, come along. We're going to take a long walk. You and I are going to take a long walk. When did you train me, Mr. Reed? Can I get eight o'clock? But I'll be back tomorrow night. All these examinations on one day? No, I'll go back to Glasgow Sunday. Then physics on Monday, yes. Allison, what do you do when you grow up? I told you that once, long ago. I'll marry a fine man and have many fine children. What do you do? Would you say we're grown up now? No, Robbie, not quite yet. How it be? Think about it. I think perhaps you'd better concentrate on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. All I can keep in mind is how much I want to kiss you. Then, then perhaps you'd better kiss me, Robbie. Oh, oh my God! You win the scholarship. You win. I love you. Just came Rudy. A telegram from Glasgow University. <coughs> well, tell me, tell me. History, ninety-two percent. You missed only one question in geometry. Roby, you know what this means. We know, we know. <laughs> you still got the examination on Monday, but I swear to you on the basis of what you've done, if you only get 50% in physics, you'll win the market. <sighs> Mr. Gow, you wouldn't have a drink in the house. Not until Monday. <laughs> now, now, what about that cough, Roby? Oh, it's, it's, it's just a cold. Uh, he's a wee bit warm on the side. Uh, uh, well, I'll stop by the doctor. I've got the rest now, anyway. Goodbye, Roby. Good boy. He, he'd best stay in bed. Is that it, Doctor? Man, he's bad. He will get this prescription to the chemist right away. Robbie has examinations Monday and Wednesday. Do you think by then? The chemist is a hundred and four. Mister Gow, your grandson's on the verge of pneumonia. How are you feeling, Robbie? Oh, I'm fine, Mister Reed. The doctor said I could go out today. Ten days have been in bed. Now. Yes, yes, boy, I know. Robbie, I wrote to the university. I ask if you may take your examination when you've recuperated. Mr. Reed, well, why didn't you tell me? Because they've refused. I went myself to Glasgow yesterday. I went down on my knees to them. If there's any consolation, they've ranked you second. Oh. Thank you, sir. I begged them to give you an average on your physics, but no. No, they're ruled by, guided by rules, not by justice. Well, you're young, something else will turn up. There's Alison here. She wants to see you. Rosie. Take care, laddie. Alison... You know. Yes, Robert, it's just... There's no bad news. Bad and dear. But what happened? If he was coming to see you, Robert, he told me where. He was running to the train. He slept to... He thought that. Dead? Dead? Robert, where are you going? Robert! As a matter of fact, he's coming as my guest on his money. 
As a music lover of long standing, I shall never allow myself to miss a rendition of Hamlet's Messiah. Handel, in fact. Oh, that's what I said. Uh, Grandpa, there's a famous teacher coming to the concert. If he likes my voice, Mother would insist on not going to the conservatory at any time. Oh, I don't want to go, Grandpa. I don't want to leave Robert. Oh, he'll be coming back, Lassie. But who's the one that should be studying that high? Oh, Grandpa, what a fine doctor he could be. And when I think of him, Donald, that boiler works, I... There's things, Lassie, that no one can stop, good or bad. But what about Robert? Don't tell him till the concert's over. You know, who knows? Perhaps you'll make such an eternal mess of it, there'll be nothing to worry about. <laughs> It was like an angel, Allison. You're a fan tonight. I was never so proud. Brother, he's a priest. I... Brother, I... Oh, you needn't say it. Grandpa told me. You're going away. That's the other day. Oh, you'll go further than that? No, Brother, no. I heard you sing tonight. Then I'll not leave here at all. Oh, you must. Oh, Brother, say the word. I'll be the Lord of you. How can I tell you? How could I? Do you love me, don't you? If you love me, then put me on you. What would I be doing for you if I'm out of here? I know my place. Whether I'm suited or not, whether I choose it or not, I have a place that the boiler works, and I'll not share it with you. Oh, I was really. If I loved you less, you might be different. You're young. I... I suppose we'll get over it. I may be young for you. I'm not going to tell you. Would you take me home, Rob? Robbie, come in. We've been looking all over for you. Papa. Dr. Gilfrey. Mama, Robbie. She's very ill. Happy so sudden. Her heart and body can tolerate just so much wear and tear, Robbie. Well, no. That's what she is. Well, no. There's nothing I can do. It's in good hands, me. Robbie. I'll be in my room, Papa. You will pray for her, Robbie. Light the candle by your shrine. Pray for her, Robbie. I doubted my redeemer. Forgive me. Punish me, Lord, but not Mama. Never doubted me. All that religion has to see. I ought to. I need to start. Let her live and I'll never doubt again. Never. Bobby, she's gone, right? She's gone and left. Yes, Father Roach. I was just coming to your house, Rad. I heard Mrs. Lucy was ill. She's dead. God bless her. Robert, what's that got to do? All my life I've worn this. But I'm throwing away now. I'm weary of metal. This may be God's way of testing you, of showing you the way you must go. What way? Into the priesthood, my son. If God didn't want me to be a doctor, it's too late to apply him by being a priest. It's never too late to turn to God. I don't believe in God. God believes in you, Robert. I don't believe in God anymore. In a moment, we'll return with a third act of The Green Year, starring Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, and Hume Cronin. satisfied that he threw it away. Fortunately, his wife had faith in her husband's ability, so he received the manuscript and sent it off to the publisher. Since that time, the song has sold more than 11 million copies in one form or another. Whiting had other famous offsprings, of course, Sleepy Time Gal, 
Ain't we got fun? Louise, popularized by Maurice Cavalier. Not to mention his own vocalist offspring, Margaret Whiting. But it's Till We Meet Again, which has left its mark on the musical and non-musical world. So aptly was the bitter sweetness of parting, captured by Richard Whiting. Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of The Green Year, starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Wilbur, Beverly Tyler as Allison, and Jim Cronin as Mr. Lucky. All in a few months, Robert Shannon's modest world has cast down a dozen. One disaster after another. Morose now in silence, ignoring everyone, even Grandpa Gow, Robert works on in the family. Sharing a word for his family, only when he comes home at night to suffer. You're late, Robbie. Am I? It isn't enough for my old age to have to come back here. No. I must care for a houseful of men who come late to me. There's my book. You won't wait for him, will he? And that old man upstairs, for the him. I'll take him his place. No, you'll not. He eats downstairs with the rest of us, or he'll not eat at all. Sit down. You're late, my duck. Where's Grandpa? He's in his room. Are you sure? Look at this. Grandpa's hat. I have hat. Found floating on the common pond. I'll look upstairs. Grandpa! They found his coat by the footbridge. Don't you see him, lad? Uh, I don't recollect, my daughter. The man avoids me. The common pond, did you say? My daughter, is it possible? I say anything was possible the way he's been treated. Yes, Robbie. Well, it's that's not been threatened. He's gone my maggot and day and night, and you threatened to send him to the workhouse. Workhouse? Papa wouldn't do that. And what do you know about it? When have you been home, say, to eat and sleep? Well, I support him. I pay his keep. Papa's got no right. Why, you pay your seat, but you're speaking like a stranger. Like you beat everybody since Allison went away. What about him? Why would he wish to live any longer? Now he's been after the misery of the place. He's been looking forward to the flower show and the fair. He takes my coronation for his own. I, I just don't know. Well, I do. There's no sympathy. You must wire for Adam. First thing, devoted to the old man he was. And he knows all about the insurance. Uh, Robbie, where are you going, boy? I'm going out. Uh, uh, you'll send that telegram for me. I'll send it, Papa. If I don't find him. <laughs> Another day, no sign of him yet. Oh. So you came, madam. I'm glad to see you, Robbie. No trace at all, Robbie. I've oh, looked everywhere, Kate. He was a fine man, a lovely man. We're certain Grant is still alive, Adam. The insurance will be paid, Papa. Touch on the spot. Oh, Ruby, how oh, my heart breaks for you. I was just saying, Mrs. Boozemley, a finer man never breathed. He had his fault. A weakness or two. But what is that? Why don't you say what you're really thinking? That he's worth more to your death than alive. I'm shocked with you, Robbie. Where's your manners? Papa, Mr. McCarran's here. Oh, lawyer McAllister, come in, come in. The police, uh, just inside the door here, Mr. Lucky. Uh, they'd like to speak to you. The police? Aye, aye, they found Gandhi Gow. He's been in jail. Bring him in, constable. It's Grandpa. In jail? Mr. Gow. <sighs> Mr. Gow, you're intoxicated. I am, Mr. Lucky. <clears throat> Robbie Ladd <laughs> and Mrs. Bosomley. He walks in beauty like the night. Of cloudless climes and starry skies. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a uh, thunder, sir. Dear family and friends, and you, Madam Lucky, <laughs> forgive me. Robbie, are you not coming with me? <laughs> oh, Grandpa. In a body, with a body, coming to the right. In a body. Good morning, Grandpa. Here, your medicine. Why can't you content yourself with beating me to death? Now get out of my way. I'm getting up getting this. You're staying in bed. Do you think there's going to be a flower show and there's a job there and a fair in Loganford and me not in attendance? You know what the doctor said. You know what's words like the last one you'll meet with a nature. That will be an embarrassing meeting for both of us. And Grandpa, you've got to keep off the whiskey. On my honor as a gentleman, Robbie, why I've not had a drop for days. Except for that bottle under your mattress. Hey. Eh? No, no, I'll stay home with you, Grandpa. Go on, go on. No, go on and enjoy yourself. No, I'll keep you company. I won't go. If you stay in this house, I'll never speak to you again. Get out, get out. Just leave me here to die all by myself. Look, Papa, it's Grandpa. Martin there with the home guard, and it is killed. Mr. Zoe, here. 
And contrary to my explicit instructions, and look, take a note of his tree. A whiskey bottle. Oh, that man. That wretched man. Robert, I'll take care of him, Papa. <laughs> Allison. Allison, what are you doing here? Away from Edinburgh. If you'd answered my letter, then you wouldn't have known where to take me. Well, well, anyway, I'm glad you're back. It's only for the day. I couldn't miss the train. Neither could Grandpa. You see it? Yes, and I've got to find him. Allison, Kurt may see you in a few minutes. I'll be here, Rosie. I'll get Grandpa and take him to move back. I'll be right back. <laughs> Step up, lady, step up. Have a glass with your grandpa's friend. Grandpa, put your glass down and come here. Grandpa, Allison's here. Hey, Can I trust you just for a few minutes? Why, that is for eternity. Grandpa, how do you do it? Do what? I'm 18 years old. Compared to you, I'm an old man. How do you do it, Grandpa? I'd like to know. You're in the green years, Robbie. You suffer the critical disease of being young. The Lord deliver me from ever having to go through that again. Well, go on, find your lassie. I'll not budge in. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll go to Murdoch. You got a girl at the flower exhibit. Uh, get, get me one of Murdoch's carnations, Robbie. Will you? I don't feel well. You won't give me the favor? Robbie, I'd like to. I'd like to, laddie, but I don't think I can. Uh, Robbie. Uh, Robbie. Grandpa. Uh. Grandpa! And you're Robert Cannon, and you one day you'll be back in church again. You dead, Father Hood? My great grandfather, yes, lad, a hell. He's a man of many follies, but he was incapable of me. He never died in his God. He could do things because he enjoyed doing them. Oh, do you think the God who understood my great grandfather? I forgive him. I have doubted you. He will forgive you. I should like to pray with you, Robert. Yeah, my lady, Papa, Katie, Margaret. Well, now that we're home, I want you to know that I think it was a fine funeral. A fine funeral. Mm-hmm. Oh, when you're with Adam. Oh, sir. Yes, Adam. Expensive. To Katie. May I come in? Ah, Mr. McKellar, make yourself comfortable. Uh, don't leave, Ruby. Yes, this hardly concerns him. We're about to take up the matter of the will. If you'll excuse me. I now. want the entire family present. Now, according to my figures, the insurance comes to a matter of 658 pounds, 12 shillings and sixpence. And the right number. Exactly. We must say it, Papa. He was a fine man. Oh, I... Sit in, Robert. You respected him before he died. You might respect him now. I'm going to read the will. This is no need, sir. We all know what's in it. It's a very simple document. He left all he possessed, the insurance, that is, to your late wife. And in the event of her death, to her executor, your sex. That's proper. Mm. There's a codice there, however. The codice was drawn shortly after Robert Shannon failed his examination for the university. Sandy Dow left everything he possessed to Robert Shannon. He was insane. He was as sane as I am, saner. Well, he couldn't do that. It's not legal. It's legal. It's a crown, Papa, and I'm black. I'll take it to law. I'll take it to law. I'll take it to law. Well, so, Mr. Letty, I do so, and I promise you I'll fight you in the county court. I'll fight you in the high court. I'll fight you to the floor of Parliament itself. <laughs> Robert, it was Gandhi Gow's fault that you'd finger some wisely on your education. But I seem to mind him saying a sort of afterthought it was that if you preferred to invest it in wine, women, and song, that was your privilege. Oh, my God! At last, Alison. At last, I stand before thee. The great gates of the University of Glasgow. Give me your hand, baby. My hand. Walk in the outdoors, see those shapes, Rosie. Walk into your streets, Rosie. 